the network. On the Breakfast Club, actually, and he was talking about how at Motown, like, it wasn't no none of that inspiration stuff. It was like, nah, we were professional writers. This is a craft, right? So that means our writers come in and they write every day, regardless of how you feel. And I think a lot of artists, right? This goes back to that woo-woo magic of the music industry. We think, oh, I just have it. And it's this inspired moment. And we only write when I feel in a certain mode or in a certain zone. And, and I need to wait for inspiration. Inspiration's cool. But let that be a cherry on top. Don't let that be your system, your process, because you can't plan around inspiration. So that that's what that reminds me of. It's like, that's how they made the hit making factory. It's like, oh, we come in, we do this. This is a craft. No matter if it's the best song or not, I'm going to learn something in this space just by doing it and getting another rep in, just like any other sport or lifting weights or shooting basketball. Right. Yeah, it's, it's – look, I mean, to that point, the professionals don't have these kind of issues. Like, that's the other thing mm -hmm. I talked about in this sort of top 20 rules thing that we did recently where I'm like, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. And I held, I held my tongue for five years on how to rap on this. But I'm like, look, a lot of this writer's block stuff that y'all y'all complain about, a lot of this, oh, I'm struggling. I'm like, no serious person in the music, like no professional full-time musician ever has that issue. That's just not a big thing. I'm not That's saying that, real. you That's know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that you can't find that one interview where you're like, what about when J. Cole was depressed between uh, Forest Hills Drive and Four Your Eyes Only? And there's this interview where he said he struggled. You know, I mean, yeah, or Eminem, he was getting off drugs and he said that he was, he had writer's block. Yeah, he was, he was biologically, he was getting yeah, off thinking block, stuff. you know what I'm saying? And you, you're different. right, because when I, I've seen interview with time and time and time again, where a lot of these artists, right, they're like, yo, I could write a hit like that. Like, they just make it seem like nothing, I could write it like, I, I've seen it so many times and I've talked to so many people who are just writers. I did an interview with a, with a guy um, named Cash Mace. Um, it hasn't dropped yet, but it was like probably like two weeks ago and we were talking and he writes, he, he, he got a strong pen game. He, he, he lives and dies off of his pen game. He like, yo man, nah, I can, I can write like nothing. This is nothing for me. He went and wrote a song for Spanx, right? He went a song for uh, like Tory Lane. Like he, he just does it right. Like, and that's, you're right, man. I'm so glad you said that. Cause I never really thought of articulating that to people i usually say if you're a professional this is how you this is how you need to do it and that's what professionals do but i never even thought about the fact that yeah the people who are in it for real like nobody has this problem this is a make-believe problem because you're not approaching you have to force your mind to do it just like when i was writing for a newspaper for a period of time in college man like when i was in that wave i could write like in a get it out right. that was a part right. of that was a part of the game that you have to get good at doing good in a short period of time right it's not quantity does not necessarily mean bad quality no, no. For the best people they can get both and nail it you know what i mean you know yeah i mean i yeah i got a couple of examples of that right so let's use a famous example that i like to use okay not only well, is this not a problem? You are expected to not have this problem. And let me give mm. an example we all know. Okay, so what a time to be alive. Drake and Future. We all know it, right? Well, however anybody feels about that album, it is, let's keep it a thousand, it's considered one of the better collaborative albums of this past decade, period. Whether or not you like it. Okay, so we know the story behind that, right? Drake is in Atlanta. I don't know why. Probably we chasing whoever, right? You know what I'm saying? And Future is at Patchwork, wherever he is, right? He's making some songs, doing what Future does, which is another one that just writes it like it's nothing, right? And Drake goes into the studio just on his Atlanta vacation, and he's like, let me see what, what he's up to. Mm -hmm. He sees Future make four or five bangers <laughs> in a row. And he's like, this is Drake at the height of his powers, right? This is literally right after the, the Meek battle. Right, the Meek Battle mm -hmm. was around right. late July 2015, uh, August 2015. That album we're talking about was released in September 2015. So this is in the middle of Drake in his biggest year, same year that uh, right, Reading It's Too Late came out, all that. So he has no in incentive to sit down with Future. He's so inspired by how quickly Future is making these tracks. He stops for six days. He says, I got six days to do this and make this, this album. Right, so that is what, y'all want to be as big a Drake in the future? 
That's what you're expected to do. What it, uh, Drake, oh, Future, you really doing, I really want to do this mixtape. I got six days, but man, I'm struggling with the writer's block right now. Future would be like, man, if you don't get out of here, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, somebody in the comments going to be like, well, you probably had the ghostwriter right with him. It was pretty easy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that ghostwriter delivered in six days. <laughs> yeah, so be Drake's ghostwriter. Yeah. Okay, so one more quick example on that point that involves us. I know if at some, at some point we'll be in the same city, we can do a live video, it'll be dope, right? I know you and I, how much videos we do, how much coaching we do. Do you think it'll be, we'll need to like wait to be inspired to sit together on front of a camera? Like, hold on, you know what I'm saying? No, we do this every day, right? I've worked with people, uh, other internet people, and I'll sit down with them and I'm like, all right, let's do the video. And they're nervous as hell. I'm like, dude, I know you make millions of dollars online. How are you nervous to do this interview? And they're like, oh, I just don't do it that way. And I realized, oh, I'm a YouTuber. I do this all the time. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? So like you said, there are so many different examples of it, but you're expected to do this if you want to be the Drake future, Brand man, Sean, how to rap Drew, whatever of your, your space. Like this is not, and you will be laughed out. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, bro. It's like Jay-Z is not signing you to Rock Nation. If you even, if even through his team years, you said, I got writer's block, it's, talk, it's hard. Like what? You're a million dollar, you're a $10 million bet for Jay-Z. Like if I'm, if I'm putting $10 million onto somebody in any form, I, I, the last thing I want to think, even 1% of my mind, is that this person might fall apart due to struggling in, in inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, I just had to go on that little ring. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, that, that's real. And I think that's, that's necessary for me to approach it that way. Because once again, this is your profession, man. You have to decide to do it. And you do it. You take yourself seriously. Today, okay, I know. They're not doing artist development like that. But you have to take that onus on yourself, right? Take that responsibility and you develop yourself, right? Because we see the results of what a lack thereof still looks like. We can say, oh yeah, but these artists are just popping up, popping off. But what happens to most of them? Like what happens to most of them? The few that don't like QC does, they do a good job where, yeah, you got somebody look like a little baby that just came in and yeah, he, he started off here right? Because of who he was associated with and running through their system. But you can tell they keep him on some artist developments. Like, it's not just like, like, oh yeah, you just, you, we give you the money. We give you these platforms. We put your music out here and we use our check. Nah, bro, you get, you take it, you do, you doing this now. All right. You gonna get better. Right? Like it's, it's a mentality, just like all them guys stay in the studio all day. Right? It's a mentality. So like, that's, that's just a thing, man. You, you have to do that no matter what you're doing. And if you're not doing it, that's when you're going to have those blocks. When I have to do way too much stuff on other ends of life or business, then I might come back to YouTube for a second and be like, ah, it's not coming just yet. Well, like for a hot, hot second. But like that was more of an earlier on thing. Now I'm at a point where it's like, yeah, I got a billion ideas. I'm just being picky on which one I think is going to blow, even though I know that you know that that that, I, that might not be which one I think anyway. Like it's just gonna, gonna be a random video, you know. So yeah, on on that point because we did cover this in the last one where we. It's the network. Ow.